Hey everybody, welcome to The Shift with Gina. Today's video is gonna be about Lizzo's latest announcement, announcement that she is quitting, not quitting music, but apparently, according to her quitting, giving attention to the so-called negative energy that she gets all the time. And we're gonna explore the question, are we starting to see the fat positivity trend and the body positivity trend start to die down a little bit? Is it coming to an end? And of course, we'll talk about why this trend is so harmful to women in general. But you guys all know how I feel about body positivity. If you or maybe you're new to my channel, uh, I have spent the last probably eight years at this point speaking out against the body positivity trend, especially after I saw firsthand how body positivity content was carefully curated in the women's media companies that I used to work for. I worked for years as first a freelance editor, then a full-time staff writer, and then um, a full-time editor. I was a fitness and health editor for a lot of these companies that you would know their names if I said them, but they get millions and millions of unique views every month on this kind of content. And I just want everyone to know, I've been saying this for years, the people who write all of the body positivity and fat acceptance content are thin, size two women, who drink almond milk lattes and go to Soul Cycle, and they would never dream about being a size 14, but they want you to be obese because slay queen, you go girl. And notice there's no equivalent on the men's side. There's no body positivity for men. You don't see any thin fit men telling other dudes to be obese, overweight, to celebrate their big belly. You just don't see that because men won't fall for this nonsense. So that's one of the reasons why I, uh, the main reason why I quit working in these media companies because I saw just how hypocritical this body positivity content was. It's not about empowering women. It's all about clicks and views, engagement, advertisement revenue, money, and it's not about actually helping women get healthier. So we're gonna talk about Lizzo's viral post, but before we do that, I just wanna tell you that this episode is brought to you by my weight loss program called Fit and Lean. We are now open for new spots to, to sign up. I do a 10 week weight loss program where you get group coaching calls every week with me. You get a workout plan, you get a recipe book. I help you with macro guidance. I help you download the app and figure out how to log in all your food. I tell you how much protein you should be eating, carbs and fats, all of it. So if you are wanting to get ready for summer, spring, and you're wanting to look and feel your best, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look better for summer, especially if you've got a big event coming up, if you've got someone's wedding to go to, someone's graduation, a vacation, where you know you wanna look and feel your best, now's the time to sign up for the Fit and Lean program. I've had so many women who have had great success with the program. The tagline is lose 10 pounds in 10 weeks, but I'll tell you, I've got a lot of women who have lost more than 10 pounds in 10 weeks. And the best thing that we do is we focus on sustainable ways to actually keep the weight off after the program is long gone. So if you're interested in signing up, there's the link in the description in the show notes here. If you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to me, but we are now accepting new signups. So join us before summer kicks in. It's a perfect time to get ready for summer. Okay, Lizzo. Lizzo has been at the forefront of body positivity for a few years now. She is the shining beacon for fat acceptance. However, a couple of days ago, she posted a declaration on her Instagram and said, I quit. She voiced her exhaustion from the relentless negativity and scrutiny that she faces both online and in her personal life. And she said, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. So let's take a look at her post on Instagram. We can read through it a little bit. Here it is. All I want to do is make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this. Shit. I quit. Okay, and that's what she says. It was just a written out post for those of you who are just listening to audio. It's just... Um, the text written out and she did a screenshot of it and then she just posted it on her Instagram. The thing has like 7,800,000, 700,000 likes and all these comments being like, you go girl, you, you quit, you know, don't accept that negative energy. So it's funny that she says she's tired of being the butt of the joke and people disrespecting her name. Okay, Lizzo, well, maybe stop showing up to basketball games with your bare butt hanging out in front of families and children, and maybe people would show you a little bit more respect. 
just a suggestion. Lizzo took to Instagram again, I think a day or two after that, to clarify her declaration of I quit, confirming that she is not stepping away from music or her online presence. She was just talking about rejecting the negativity rather than getting rid of her career. And she said, when I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving my negative energy attention, giving any negative energy attention. And so she clarified that she's still going to do music and, you know, whatever. Um, So let's take a look quickly at her video. And it's funny because she's like barely wearing any clothes, of course. This is what's so ironic to me. These women, they complain when people make comments about their bodies. They complain when people make comments about their figure, but they're constantly showing their figures online for everyone to see. If you don't want people commenting on your naked body, maybe don't show your naked body all the time online. I don't know, just a suggestion. So here she is. Let's take a look. I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I yeah, say wearing, I quit. She must be wearing her like I mean, bodysuit. I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is. Okay, that's it. She's talking about, oh, I'm going to make more music and this is the joy of my life. Okay. I don't even want to look at that anymore. Okay, even though her declaration, you know, I'm I'm not actually quitting music, many people can't help but wonder if the fat positive era is coming to an end. Are we seeing the end, the the beginning of the end here? Um, This is a question that I think is worth asking because I really, really wonder if people are just over it. In her original post, Lizzo said that she was sick of being put down by the way that she looks. And although, you know, all these things are like dramatic things for her to say, Many of her critics took it to mean something bigger. And I think a lot of people are realizing that perhaps we are actually getting to the point in our culture where we're sick and tired of looking at unattractive, obese, naked images of of celebrities. And we're yearning for something pretty, refreshing, youthful, attractive once again. And Lizzo has been shoving her naked body in everyone's faces for years now, not only at basketball games, but a number of other public places Get that viral video of her walking onto her private jet with literally her whole bare butt hanging out of her lingerie. And she's twerking in front of the camera all the time. There's so many videos and photos of her just on Instagram of herself completely naked and just covering up the little parts of her genitals and her nipples, just naked all the time. She's fully naked in numerous photos and videos. She loves to expose herself and twerk in front of millions of people. Not only is it wildly inappropriate and gross, but there's nothing about these images that is inspiring or beautiful. She degrades both herself and women in general by posting all this content online. So maybe we've arrived at the point where far too many people are just sick and tired of seeing these images. And on top of that, we're past political correctness and we're past the stage of fake politeness. In the wake of ugliness and crass inappropriate behavior, people cannot help but open their mouth and say, we don't wanna see this anymore. This is gross, this is disgusting. Stop doing this. Stop shoving this in my face. We're sick and tired of people trying to shove these images at us and convince us that this is beautiful, that this is the new standard of beauty. And this is where a lot of the frank feedback is coming from. A lot of people are sick and tired of this new beauty, quote, new beauty standard being being thrown in their faces. And so they're being honest with Lizzo online. They're not afraid to write all of the comments. They're not afraid to give their feedback. And all this is directed at Lizzo and many other figures like her because Lizzo is constantly doing this kind of stuff online. And she just isn't able to handle the criticism. She's just not. Now she's now she's playing victim as if she's the one who's being Uh, pushed around and bullied online what did she expect when she was showing her naked self all the you know everywhere online so I want to look at this tweet because it's very telling of where people are at right now but um it's kind of brutal I have to say this tweet is a little bit brutal but um it's it's a good one to to look at so this is from Medgold pretty popular Twitter x account and he quote tweeted the announcement that Lizzo was quitting you know, quitting the negative energy. He says, you are a disgusting beast. 
Your fake career was a brief and violent assault on the eyes of Americans who understood beauty. You rode the wake, the wave of wokeness, but Sydney's Sweeney's cute smile, white skin and perfect tits have awoken America. Your time has come. Good riddance. <laughs> I may have to bleep out some of those words because I might get shadow banned on YouTube or banned because you can't say mean things about certain people these days online. And yeah, this seems like a very harsh way to put things, but <laughs> a lot of the comments are like, we are so back. We are so back. And I think that the he brings up Sydney Sweeney here, but I think that the recent obsession with Sydney Sweeney and girls like Margot Robbie and Zendaya and Ana de Armas have actually been a little refreshing because these women are beautiful, relatable. They don't push any kind, any kind of annoying feminist ideology in your face 24-7. They just act and look fabulous and wear nice clothes. And Lizzo is acting like a victim because she's receiving negative feedback from her audience. And she says it's because of her weight, because she's different. Probably, she said many times, probably because the color of her skin, she's getting a lot of this feedback. And, and some people, if you stumbled across this video and you are a fan of the body positivity movement, you are probably trying to convince yourself yeah, well, you guys just say she's gross because she's overweight, because you just hate obese people and you think they're all ugly. Okay, let me explain something to you. I want to show you another tweet that is very telling of where we're at right now. Okay, because for those of you who think we just hate Lizzo because she's fat, I want you to look at this picture of Susan Boyle. Take a look at this. Inez Step Stepman, I think I follow her on X, she uh, posted a picture of Susan Boyle. She was like one of the biggest winners or contestants of the X Factor. And she's not a traditionally pretty person. She's overweight, but she came on the stage and she started singing some of the most beautiful opera music ever. Simon Cowell says that she was one of the biggest game changing moments on the X Factor because she came on stage totally unassuming and she blew people away and she moved people to tears. Now, Inez tweeted, behaving like Ariana Grande is what made Lizzo so mockable. No one but real jerks mocked Susan Boyle for being ugly. They just admired her voice because that's what she showcased. Okay, and then even above that, Inez says, Lizzo is a victim of the fat positive BS and not only re her health, She's quite talented and could have followed in a long line of unattractive but amazing singers, etc. But the zeitgeist convinced her that she should strip down and showcase her body and, you know, fake like she's hot. And this is a really good point, because for all of the people who are like, you just hate Lizzo because she's fat. No, we we do not appreciate images of naked, extremely metabolically ill people thrown in our faces Again, Lizzo has talent. She could have been someone who, just like Inez said, followed in a long line of unattractive but amazing singers and musicians. And nobody would have said a word about her weight. Nobody would have said a word about it if she just sang and was a musician. But she constantly took off her clothes and tried to make a point about the way that her body looked. And this is back again to what I'm saying. If you don't want people commenting on your body, don't show it everywhere for people to see. Okay, so really quick, I want to tell you about this brand new dumbbell workout that I just released online. I'm going to put the link in the description too. It's a 10 week workout program. So for those of you who don't want to do like a coaching program, but you want a workout program to do at home or at the gym, that's going to help you help you get fit over the next couple of months before summer. Just click the link in the description. It's brand new. It's on sale. All you need are dumbbells. It's good for all levels. You can do it at home or if you have a gym to go to, you can do it there. And it comes with tutorial videos. I also put some cardio workouts in there too. So you can add cardio to the strength. Um, so I want to share it with you guys in the description and let me know if you have any questions about it. Now, fat positivity is losing its power because more people are speaking up about their disgust and they're no longer scared to point out that obesity is a serious metabolic disorder that plagues nearly half of the American population. Now, six out of every 10 Americans suffer from some kind of um, chronic illness and four out of every 10 have two or more chronic illnesses. Okay. And so Again, I think that we're seeing a lot of people who are just sick and tired of this nonsense and they're not holding back anymore. Now, I'm not saying that we should be cruel and mean because there are some mean people online. I'm not saying that we should all do that, but I'm saying that 
whatever vitriol is being spat around online towards people like Lizzo, it comes from a place of just disgust and annoyance and exhaustion from these figures being propped up by every mainstream machine in our culture and being shoved in our faces. And so I don't know, I kind of think that we're, we are starting to see the beginning of the end of fat positivity. People don't want to see it. They want to see Sydney Sweeney. Who knows what will replace the fat positivity trend, but it's heartening to know that more and more women are expressing interest in this more natural lifestyle that aids hormonal balance and optimal metabolic function, which is much different and healthier than the heroin chic trend of the 90s and of the body positivity, body positivity trends of recent years. I mean, look at what happened to Victoria's Secret. Do you remember that? Victoria's Secret began releasing campaigns and advertisements that, that featured visibly overweight people. And this is the brand that gave us the likes of Tyra Banks and um, Kate Upton, uh, Heidi Klum, Adriana Lima, like these <laughs> women that are just like hit the genetic lottery and they're just beautiful to look at. But all of a sudden, Victoria's Secret stores were like even putting overweight mannequins in their stores. And this was all an intentional campaign. The pink brand president, Greg Unis, Unis, he told investors when they started launching this campaign, he said, sexiness can be inclusive. Sexiness can celebrate the diverse experiences of our customers. And that's what we're focused on. Hmm. So they earned praise from critics and fat positivity activists. Yeah, they were like, this is amazing. Oh my gosh, I feel so seen and heard. But this new direction did not exactly translate into increased sales for the brand. Reportedly, Victoria's Secret revenue in 2023 was $6.18 billion, which was roughly 5% lower than the previous year and even lower than 2020, which was the height of the COVID pandemic. The drop in revenue also came after the brand made its board of directors mostly female. <laughs> Oops. After this failure, this was a massive failure for the brand. The company decided to return to its earlier emphasis on classic sexiness. Body positivity may keep the activists pleased, that very small minority of shrieking women online who think that everyone that is obese and metabolically ill is beautiful and perfect. It may keep them happy, but it certainly doesn't pay the bills, and it certainly doesn't make the everyday American consumer interested in buying your products. So Victoria's Secret declared that its new goal was to improve profitability and cross back over the $7 billion in annual sales. So 2024, they're trying to get rid of all the fat mannequins and go back to featuring classically beautiful models in their campaigns. And so I think a lot of things like this point to the decline of body positivity. I think when body positivity, the modern version of body positivity first came out when we were like celebrating fat people, health at every size, I think a lot of people were just being polite and quiet because they didn't want to ruffle any feathers or offend anyone. They were like, yeah, yeah, obese people should feel loved and beautiful too. I'm totally with it. But they overplayed their hand. Too much naked, obese stuff in front of us with the fat rolls hanging out and uh, like trying to convince us this is the new beauty standard. And we want to see beauty again. We want to see classic beauty. And classic beauty is inherently tied to health. This is something that people don't like to admit. But this is why it pays to speak up, guys. So if you see a brand that features ugly, obese individuals, comment and tell them, this. hey, I don't want to see this. I'm not interested. I'm not going to buy your products. This does not make me interested in your products. I don't, I'm going to unfollow you. I don't want to see it. I'm going to stop buying things because brands are actually hearing what you're saying. And when you actually vote with your dollar, like what happened with Victoria's Secret, they realize they have to change what they're doing if they want to stay in business. And then they're going to start giving you beautiful models again. Body positivity as we know it today is not what it used to be when it first emerged onto the market. Okay, it's today body positivity is a very toxic, harmful ideology, and especially the health at every size campaign. It's a ridiculous premise based on lies and deceit, leaving many women who are struggling with obesity and a metabolic disorder totally content with their chronic illnesses and many, many cases with their eating disorders. And considering the fact, again, that half of Americans are obese. And we're seeing more and more people dying from heart disease, diabetes, stroke, all of these things that have a strong correlation with obesity. We should be doing everything we possibly can to curb obesity, not celebrate it. 
This is why we want body positivity to die out. And I think it's, we're seeing the, the beginning of the end of this trend. And thankfully, it looks like we're headed in the direction where people are just fed up with this nonsense. They're not gonna put up with it anymore. And we have to keep speaking up and being like, hey, I don't wanna see that. I don't wanna see it. And you don't necessarily have to be mean about it. You don't have to be cruel or call people names. Again, I know there are people online who are cruel and call names, but um, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be mean. You just have to be honest because again, brands, they need us as their customers. And so if we're not gonna buy things or if we're not gonna follow and engage, they're going to change their plan, their business plan. So what do you guys think about Lizzo? Do you think that body positivity is dying out? Or do you think that it's just gonna resurge again in some other way? Um, is Lizzo is, is Lizzo really gonna quit all the negative energy? Do you think that she's gonna change anything with what she's doing or she's gonna keep posting naked stuff online? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget, as always, to subscribe, like, share the video if you like it. Um, we've got some other great episodes coming up soon. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.